Hello again and welcome to another book review courtesy of your good friend and YouTube pal, Logan Albright. Today we're doing the Charles Dickens classic, David Copperfield. Okay, so a little background. I had read a couple of Dickens things when I was younger, uh, The Old Curiosity Shop, The Tale of Two Cities, and of course, A Christmas Carol. And although I do like A Christmas Carol, I have never been a fan of Dickens. I never thought his writing was all that good. I thought it was overblown, overly dramatic. And so I've kind of stayed away from him as an adult and never really delved into his work to the extent that I should, especially for someone like me who loves British writers of the 19th century. But I finally decided to read David Copperfield. It is widely regarded as his best work by many people, although some people would argue Bleak House is. Um, it was his personal favorite of his works. It's somewhat autobiographical for his own life. And uh, so I wanted to check it out. And here's the edition I got. Let's talk about this edition. This is the None Such Dickens edition. Uh, it's printed as a copy of a, an older edition that is no longer in print, but is done by Overlook Press, who I've talked about before on this channel. They're very good, very high quality book. As you can see, it's a brick. It's a giant, heavy book that is a little bit unwieldy, but the edition is really nice, and it's got this leather inlay here, and it's got this uh, leather binding here, and it's got illustrations on the inside, and it's got nice readable text and high quality paper. So I really like this edition. Um, it's a little bit expensive, but I wanted, for a book like David Copperfield, I wanted to get something nice and a good edition. So that's what I went with. Now for the plot. There may be a few spoilers in here, so if you haven't read it and you care, maybe be cautious watching this, but it's nothing nothing too huge. Um, David Copperfield is a young orphan boy, and it's about his adventures as he goes through life in Victorian England. Um, the thing I noticed about him as a protagonist that is that he's very passive. He very takes very little action to do anything mostly the events of the novel surround him they happen to him or they happen around him uh, without him taking very much action to intervene in them so it's a little bit odd to have the protagonist of this 870 page novel really just kind of watch as things happen around him it's not nearly as active as lots of similar protagonists from the same time period so i found that interesting on the plus side i think dickens was tremendously witty it's a very funny book He's great at creating these sort of eccentric English characters that you really only get in English books. You don't see these kind of people in America. Really weird, oddball, offbeat characters. Very funny, kind of lovable. Um, in particular, David's aunt, who's named Aunt Betsy, and his uh, her friend, who's named Mr. Dick. They're great characters. I love them. Couldn't get enough of them. So that's one of the things I loved about it. It's, again, there's a lot of humor in there. It really captures Englishness. It really captures the Victorian era and kind of what it felt like to live then. It, it highlights some of the problems. Dickens is known for being a social commentator and, and critic of the Victorian England and, and the Industrial Revolution, all the problems with it. And there's a little bit of this in that in this book, but it's not solely preoccupied with that. So you kind of get a sense of how miserable it was for the have-nots and people who were had to work for a living and people who uh, didn't have uh, high birth and you know the problems with if your reputation got ruined you were you were out of luck there wasn't much you could do you basically had to leave the country so it really kind of gives you insight into that which is and gives you sympathy for those people which is, is nice you don't want to just romanticize victorian england like a lot of people do you want to see the problems with it as well but you don't want it to be wholly depressing either so i think he did a good job of striking that balance i really like that about the book and I, again, I love the characters. Some of the plots are good. Um, the things I didn't like about the book was I already said David himself himself is not a great protagonist that we're really rooting for because he doesn't ever take any decisive action. He just lets things happen. Um, I thought the the book had a tendency to drag in certain places. I've heard uh, that Dickens loved the book so much he had a hard time abandoning it. He had a hard time leaving it at the end. So there's a sense that he's like the story's kind of over. Uh, but he's not really willing to end the book, so he just keeps dragging it out. So it goes on a little too long. Uh, and this is from someone who likes long books and who reads lots of, of long things. You know, the common criticism of Dickens is that he was paid by the word, and so, and it shows because he writes too much. In general, I didn't feel that was the case, but at the end, it did kind of drag a little bit as if he didn't want to quite say goodbye to the book. The other criticism I have is that there's a little bit of adolescent revenge fantasy going on here. It's like by the end, and this is where the spoilers come in, um, 
David Copperfield is like, I was an orphan who came from nothing and I became rich and famous and successful and married with kids and all my enemies were either banished to another continent or put in jail. Ha ha. It's all good for me. Everything worked out. And it's just a little too tidy and a little too neat. And there's all these improbable coincidences, which I get are a hallmark of this genre. And I generally don't mind as a rule, except for it just feels a little too easy. You know, there's not enough of a, of a journey going through it. It's just like, oh, someone did me wrong. Well, I'll write them into prison. Easy. And I found that a little bit hackneyed. I wish he had done a better job of that. I'm comparing this a lot to other novels of the same time period. My favorite novelist, which I think I've mentioned on here before, is Victor Hugo, who wrote in the 19th century in France. And I just found his characters a lot more real and a lot more believable and a lot more sympathetic. And they really go through struggles and journeys and that you really feel for them in their times of, of need and want. You know, I, I wept for Quasimodo and for Esmeralda and for Jean Valjean. I never didn't feel that way about David Copperfield or anyone else in this book, with the exception of, of Aunt Betsy and Mr. Dick, who I really did care about as characters. The rest of them, you know, they were fun characters and I enjoyed them, but I didn't have the same emotional attachment to them that I've had for other books of the same time period. So I definitely want to read more Dickens after this. I did enjoy the book quite a lot, and I think there's a lot of great writing in it. Uh, I'd be interested to know where to go next. I kind of want to read Bleak House because I've heard it's very good. I kind of want to read some of his more comedic ones like, um, oh, Nicholas Nickleby I've heard is good. Uh, so if anyone has any recommendations, please leave them in the comments. I'd be interested to know where I should go on from here. Um, but I, yeah, I did enjoy the book. It had several flaws, which I mentioned, and I will be reading more Dickens in the future. So that's my review of David Copperfield. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe and leave me comments below, and I'll see you next time. Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm Logan Albright. Catch you later.